How's it going guys? In today's lesson we're going to be looking at how we can create a grid layout in SwiftUI and it's going to look like this. So, so far it looks like something we could achieve using a V stack and an H stack and as you can see it's just rows of items but I'm going to show you the benefit of using a grid layout. For example, if we rotate the screen, you're going to notice the items are going to do their best to fit on the screen. So we're going to have larger rows and it's going to adapt to our screens. So that's one of the main advantages of using the grid layout. Otherwise, of course, if you use a V stack and an H stack, it's going to be stuck on two by two and it takes a lot more effort to create layouts like this one. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. And the very first thing we have to do is go ahead and create some sample data. So here we'll type in private var data, which will be an array of type int. And that's going to equal an array of the numbers one to 20. So we're just going to generate 20 numbers and stash them into an array. Then private let callers, which is going to be an array of caller and that's going to equal dot red, dot green, dot blue, and dot yellow. Now I'm going to demonstrate three different ways you can create columns for your layouts. And the very first one I want to show you is the adaptive layout. So private let adaptive columns equal an array. And inside here, we need to go ahead and insert the columns that we want. And to make it adaptive, we're going to go ahead and call grid item. And all of the columns are always going to take a grid item. So grid item dot adaptive, and you're going to receive a minimum and a maximum. For this example, we want each item to occupy a minimum of 170 points. And we're not going to specify the maximum for this, but with that being put into place, now every time we draw a rectangle, if there's at least 170 points available on the screen, it's going to stash one. If there's more than that, it's going to stash two, but it's going to check that there's always a minimum of 170 points on the screen. Now let's go ahead and create this layout really quickly. And I want to put this all in a navigation view. So it looks nice. And inside here, we need a scroll view. And the scroll view is going to have a navigation title of grid sample. Then we need a lazy V grid for this one. And the columns are going to be set to the adaptive columns. And I have a typo there, columns. And there's going to be a spacing between them of 20. And I will close the sidebar since it's not necessary. Then inside here, we need to go ahead and create a for each loop. And this is going to iterate over the data we have and the ID is going to be backslash dot self. Each number is unique, so that's fine. And number in. So now we can take care of each one of the numbers and create a rectangle. So for this, I'm going to create a Z stack with a rectangle and a dot frame with the width of 170 and 170, no alignment. And it's very important that this is the minimum of this. These two numbers should be related. Otherwise, you're going to have to put some other logic into here to make them smaller as the screen becomes smaller. But let's go ahead and add the foreground color because I think just having it black is a bit dull. We're going to type in colors is going to equal or it's going to be at the index of number modulus operator four. And it crashed before I could finish. Thank you, Xcode. But once you have this into place, it's going to alternate between green, blue, yellow, red, green, blue, yellow, red. Because we have four colors, we just add the number with the modulus operator of four. If you have more colors, just change it to the amount of colors that you have in your array. And because we're in 2022, we need to go ahead and add a corner radius because people like nice corners on their cards. Now let's go ahead and add some numbers so we can tell which one is which. So here we're going to type in text backslash number foreground caller is going to be set to dot white and the font is going to be dot system with a size of 70 and we're going to have font weight of medium followed by a design of dot rounded. And finally, on the scroll view, let's go ahead and add some padding. So as you can see, we have these cards and they're all nicely stacked against each other. And if we run the program inside here, you can easily go down and up and it's going to adapt depending on the screen size. But let's actually also run that in a real emulator. 
So as soon as it's up and running, you'll notice that we can scroll through it like a normal list. And if we rotate the device, it's going to adapt. So that's great. We have an adaptable view. And let me go ahead and show you the other two kinds of columns we can create. So here we're going to go ahead and type in private let number columns, and this should be private. My God, I am terrible today. And we're going to assign it an array of grid items again, so grid item. And inside this grid item, we're going to go ahead and type in dot flexible. And we do not need these two parameters inside this time. We can just go ahead and remove that. And this is going to take care of deciding how many columns you want. And it's going to try to fill the available space to the best of its ability. So if you just want one column and you insert your number columns here, it's going to make sure that there's only one column on our layout over here. But if you want multiple columns, you can go ahead and just copy this and paste it right under. And then you're going to have two columns. And that's great because now we can specify the number of columns and make sure it's always two columns. But if we go ahead and run this, you're going to notice that it's not going to adapt like the other one. It's going to make sure that it fills the available space and that's how it's going to take care of it. If we rotate it to its original position, it's going to do the same thing as earlier, but it's always going to take two columns. And a downside to this approach is that let's pretend we have a smaller device such as the iPod Touch and we refresh the preview. You're going to notice that the items are going to start to clip together. While if we use the adaptive columns, it's only going to create one row because that's all the space that's there for this grid item over here. So flexible is always going to try to make room for it even if there's no room, while the adaptive is going to make sure that there's space on the screen before trying to make it larger. But let's change this back to an iPhone 13. And the very last one I want to show you today is the private let fixed columns. So we're going to create fixed width columns. And to do that, we just have to go ahead and create another array and assign it some grid items. So grid item, and this time it's going to be assigned with dot fixed. And inside here, we should provide how many points we want it to cover. So for this example, we'll type in 200 and let's create two of them. Otherwise it feels kind of pointless. So here we'll type in 200 and 200. And of course we need to go down here and add the fixed columns in the lazy V grid. So now the fixed columns are occupying at least 200 pixels of the screen. If we change this to 170, you're going to notice that one side is going to occupy a little bit less than the other side. And we can change them both to 170 if we want it to look like what we had earlier. So as you can see, now it's just occupying 170 pixels at least. And if we change this to something bigger, like 250, it's going to push the other ones out of the view because now this one occupies a lot more space than the second one. So make sure that it occupies the content that you have. Otherwise it's going to clip out of the view, but we can actually go ahead and run this as ugly as it looks and rotate the screen. And here you'll notice that this still occupies the same amount. So it's going to push this one a little bit more to the right. And that's essentially how the fixed layout works. So with that, we can create something such as 170 by let's say 300 by 170. And when we rerun the application, there's gonna be more room for the central one and less room for the external ones. So that's a bit customizable in its own way. As you can see, the center one is there while the other ones are pushed to the side. But let's go ahead and remove that and leave it at 200 because that was fine to have both of them of a fixed dimension. But with that being said, guys, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. It was that simple to create a grid view. And as you can see, we have several different options on how we can style it or how we can rearrange it. So that's definitely up to you. But as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.